Hi there, initiates. Do you know what this is? It says town. Yeah, it says town, and it contains the early designs of all the places and buildings in the town of Harvest. It also contains some incredible revelations about the development work of Harvester. So, let's take a look at it. Welcome to the Harvester Show, Initiate. The game starts from Steve's room, so we'll start from there too. Here's the early design of Steve's room. There you can see the drawer and the bomber hanging from the ceiling and some other stuff that's in the finished game, but everything else looks different. Under the image there's plenty of empty space for all the vital information. There are four sections. Usable items, items to take and location, monsters and special animations. There are no items to take or monsters or animations in Steve's room, but there's one usable item, the drawer. But for some reason it's not mentioned here. On the side of the page there are notes written by Gil Austin, the writer and director of the game. I'll pass the notes. You can read them afterwards if you like. Let's move on. On the next page there's the drawer. Every page follows the same pattern. There's an image and under it there's an empty space for all the information. The most interesting thing here is the carving. Randall loves Steph. So at first Steve's name was Randall. Boy, am I glad they changed that. Don't get me wrong, Randall is okay, but Steve's a swell name. My dog's name is Steve. In the finished game there are some items inside the drawer but they are not mentioned here. The only item that's mentioned is a compass that never appears in the finished game. There are no monsters inside the drawer, and there are no drawer-related special animations. But there are notes by Gil Austin, again. He points out that there can't be the carving in the desk, because that would reveal the player character's name too soon. Very good point. When Steve leaves his room, he enters the living room. That's our next step. The living room here is almost the same as the living room in the finished game, but from a different angle. You can also see Hank the little brother there. According to this, there are no items in the living room, but there's a monster. The monster is Hank. Well, that little brat is a monster, but actually every character of Harvest is a monster in this book, including Stephanie. Then, let's move on to the kitchen. The image here looks surprisingly similar to the kitchen in the game. There are the cookies and the knives on the wall and so on. The only monster mentioned is mom, but in the finished game there's also the little sister. Sister? Shh, you'll wake her. I just put her down to sleep. If she wakes up, she'll just want to eat again. Now let's go to the places that has changed the most, like the meat plant. Here's the meat plant from the outside. The early design looks pretty much the same, but it takes two screens. And here's something interesting. Above every image there's a notation if the screen scrolls. Here's R, which means the screen scrolls to the right, and here's L, which means the screen scrolls to the left. In the finished game there's no scrolling, but at this point of the development work there was supposed to be plenty of scrolling. Let's walk inside the meat plant. What you see now is totally different than the early design, which is here. Whatever this is, it doesn't look like a meat plant. 
Once again, there are notes by Gil Austin written on the side of the page. There Gil basically says that the image sucks and he wants meat on hooks, bloody floor and cats. The result is here and it's much better. Then let's go to the Edna's diner. The forecourt of Edna's diner takes only one screen in the finished game, but in the early design it took three screens. There you can see the notations about scrolling again. The middle screen scrolls to both left and right, of course. In the finished game the interior of Edna's diner takes only one screen. But the original plan was three screens. Edna's diner was huge! And that's not all. There was supposed to be a separated kitchen too, but it was cut off in a very early state of the designing work. Why is Edna's diner so small in the finished game? I guess the reason is this. It's pointless to use three screens into something that can be expressed in a single screen. There's no real reason for the scrolling either. Our next step is the manhole. One of Steve's tasks is to scratch Mr. Johnson's tucker, and to do that Steve has to go through the manhole. This is what it looks like to be under the manhole. The image here is pretty close to the screen we just saw, but there's one strange thing. This hole here. Let's see what the game tells us about the hole. A small section of the wall has been resealed due to water damage, so you can't go through it. But the original plan was that you can go through the hole and it leads to the sewer. Which is here. It's not mentioned here on this page, but there was supposed to be an alligator in the sewer. How do I know? Because it's mentioned in the script. It says on the page 13 of the script that an alligator is trapped in the sewer, having fallen through an elevated crane, and will attack you. Too bad we never had a chance to see Steve eaten by an alligator. Then, let's go to the barber shop. In the finished game there are three people in the barber shop. Mr. Pastorelli who owns the place, Mr. Swell and Mr. Parsons. The early design of the barber shop looked totally different, and the section Monsters reveals us that there was supposed to be two more people, Mr. Berry and Mr. Smith, whoever they are. There was also supposed to be an aggressive sheep running across the barber shop. In the fifth episode of the Harvester Show, I told you guys all about the sheep and its relation to Mr. Pastorelli, so let's leave the barber shop and go to the jail. In the finished game, the jail looks like this, but the original plan was this. This didn't please Gil Austin at all, so he drew his own version of the jail to the other side of the page. There you can see Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne passing out after walking into a trap sprung by Steve. As you can see, this Gil Austin's vision ended up in the finished game. There's one more place in the town of Harvest that I want to show you guys. The fire station. Here's the fire station front. The firemen in Harvest are gay, so the fire truck is pink, of course. Here's the interior of the fire station. There you can see two firemen drawing a nude man. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the House of Flame, as we like to call it. Here's the early design of the fire station front. It's not so different from the screen we just saw. But then, the weirdness begins. The interior of the fire station takes two screens. There's a garage on the left and an office on the right. Because the firemen are gay stereotypes, they love to decorate, and that explains the fancy furniture in the office. But what about the fire pole? Does it lead us to anywhere? Well, of course it does. 
The fire pole leads up to the firemen's quarters. In the finished game we see only three firemen, but the original plan was that there were a big bunch of them. The script tells us more about the sleeping quarters. It says on the page 14 of the script that if you climb up into the sleeping quarters at night, that triggers a cutscene. We next see a two-screen pan across the firemen sitting up in their beds, close up on their faces, blinking blankly as they regard you. One bed is empty, another holds two firemen, one of whom smiles you shyly. Then we cut to a sheriff's car pulling away from the fire station. So sheriff was with them? Wow, that raises questions. Was Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne shagging firemen? Don't be so ghost, it's beneath you. Fireman Sparky! Some people think all we do is sit around, sketching fetching examples of manhood for our own amusement. Nothing could be further from the truth. So did the Sheriff just come to talk to you? Oh, please. Dwayne was glad enough to see the thing go up. What thing? A good piece of meat is the only way to shut him up. Okay, that's enough. I don't want this show to be censored in Russia. They all deserve a good nuclear holocaust! Thank you, Colonel Monroe. This book contains 54 pages, and I am now showing you 22 of them. Just before I uploaded this video on YouTube, I released all the pages on Harvester fanpage on Facebook. Go check them out. You can find the link to the book under this video. Now it's time to end this episode. Stop, Ardo. Sergeant at Arms, we meet again. Trick or treat. What? Oh, it's Halloween. I'd totally forgotten about that. I repeat, trick or treat. I don't have any candy for you. So what's your trick? Are you gonna kill me? Yes, Ardo. You got me, Sergeant at Arms. For a moment I thought you meant that. <laughs> Oh, Sergeant at Arms, you always were a kidder. Happy Halloween, guys. Happy Halloween.